Hi, this is the first video in the multivariate random variable module, and we're going to discuss, as you can see, joint marginal and conditional distributions. So let's look at an example. Uh, let's say that we got some data from an insurance company's policyholders, and the data is characterized as either uh, the policyholder being in a low or medium or a high risk class, and then the loss amount for that policyholder being observed by, uh, as being either a loss amount of zero or 50 or 100. So the table combined is referred to as the joint distribution, uh, sometimes joint distribution table of uh, the random variables cap R and cap X. And we can look at what the joint probability mass function would be. So for instance, I could uh, just pluck out, uh, let, let's just uh, make one up. How about the probability that cap R equals one and cap X equals 100? Verbally, this would represent the probability that if I randomly selected a policyholder uh, from this company, that that policyholder would be a, what would this be? Be a medium risk and have a loss amount of 100. And so I look at uh, the, the row corresponding where cap, equals, cap R equals one and the column that corresponds to where cap X is, is 100. And I see uh, uh, the intersection there is a 0 0.18. So there would have been a, a, an 18% chance of me selecting a, a, a policy holder that fit that category. A, low, a medium risk policy holder who had a, a loss amount of, uh, of, one, of 100, right. A notation that I'm going to use for this probability is uh, the statistical notation for the density of a random variable. So this is a, a, an F with a, a, a subscript of a cap R comma cap X. So this is the density function for the, it's the joint density for the random variables cap R and cap X. And in parentheses, the 1 comma 100, notice the cap R came first. So the 1 goes corresponds to the cap R being one, and then the 100 comes second, so it's cap X equals 100. And that's, uh, this is referred to as the joint density. So let me back up the slide one time, because I changed the word there, that were density, I changed it from mass to density. You see in the discrete framework, these, these probabilities are usually referred to as, or often referred to as, as mass, uh, as mass amounts, the probability mass. But I'm gonna, and this is standard uh, uh, uniform kind of language also, I'm gonna refer to uh, this mass function as a density function from here on out. So then uh, I'm referring to, uh, when I say the density function, if, if the random variable is a discrete random variable, then the density function is just representing probability masses or probability amounts. Uh, but then, of course, we could have some continuous random variables where the density function is not actually representing a probability amount, but it's used in order to calculate, uh, it's, it's, it's a function that's used to calculate probabilities, uh, and you would do so using integration and, and, and so forth. But again, going forward then, uh, I'm just going to refer to uh, these as density functions, uh, whether I'm in the discrete framework or the continuous framework, and then uh, how you use the density function or the interpretation of the density function will depend on whether you are in the discrete framework or the continuous framework. Another shorthand notation I'll have for this uh, will be uh, uh, just a cap F with a subscript of 1 comma 100. And so uh, it's implied here that the 1 is the cap R value, the 100 is the cap X value and just a little short, uh, uh, short, shorthand notation. And, and so I could generally use a, an R and an X, an F, cap F, I'm sorry, an F with a subscript of RX would be the probability that cap R is equal to R and cap X is equal to X. Okay, uh, just like in the single variable case, we have a joint cumulative distribution function, and it's just an extension of what we did in the single variable case. So I've got a cap F with a, a subscript of cap R and cap X, and this is the probability that the cap R value, that the cap R random variable is less than or equal to whatever the R value is in the cap X, and the cap X is less than or equal to whatever the cap X, uh, less than or equal to whatever the X value is. So for instance, evaluating this function in this case for this table at one comma 50, uh, this would be the probability that uh, cap R is less than or equal to 1 and cap X is less than or equal to 50. So I, I look at the values of the table that correspond to that event, and I've highlighted them in blue there, and I add them all up, I get 0.69. So, so, um, so that's, the prob that's, the, that's the value of the CDF, the, the uh, cumulative distribution function, uh, joint cumulative distribution function, evaluated at 1, 50. 
Okay, uh, I could turn around the inequalities. Notice the inequalities there are both less than or equal to. I could turn, switch them both around and say, well, what's the probability that cap R is greater than one and cap X is greater than 50? And then uh, find the value in the table, the probability in the table that corresponds to that event. You can see that that's just a, a 0 0.05. Now, some might refer to that as the uh, survival function, the joint survival function. I don't really want to introduce it that way. I don't want to call it the joint survival function because remember in the single uh, variable case, the, dense, the, the distribution function and the survival function are, are, are giving you probabilities of complementary events, and so they would add up to one. But of course, in this case, the 0 0.05 does not, uh, is not one minus the, the, the 0 0.69. 0 0.69 was the CDF evaluated at 150. And so if I called this the survival function at one, at, at one comma 50, then, then you would see that it doesn't, you know, they're, they're not complementary events. And so I'm just not going to, uh, it, I don't think it's going to, it won't matter. Your, your, you know, the probabilities that you're going to be asked to calculate on exams and so forth, uh, they'll just give you the event. They won't uh, ask you about the survival function of the, uh, uh, of the joint distribution. I don't believe that they'll ask you that. Okay, uh, now the density function and the distribution function, you should know those, those are standard ways of, of, of defining the density and the uh, distribution functions in this, uh, for, for a, a joint distribution uh, in the discrete framework like this. Okay, so now I could also look at a probability like a, uh, what's the probability that cap R equals zero? So cap R equals zero is, well, what's the probability that you, uh, you, you're randomly selecting a policyholder here? Uh, what's the probability that you had a, a low risk individual? Uh, and so, well, with R, cap R equals zero, the loss amount could be either a zero or a 50 or a 100. And so the law of total probability would tell me I need to add up these three values uh, where cap R is zero and X is zero, cap R is zero and, and cap X is 50, or cap R equals zero and cap X equals 100. So I've color coded it here just to kind of show you that these are just plucking numbers out of the table and adding them together. And when I do that, I'll get a, a, a 0 0.3. So the, uh, uh, the, the, the probability there is, is 0 0.3. And this is uh, the notation that I'm gonna use. I, uh, let me back up for just a second. The notation I'm gonna use for this is an, an F with a subscript of cap R evaluated at zero. I'll come back to that statement in just a second, um, but that's the, that's a notation I'm gonna use. I didn't have to pick on a cap R, I could have picked on cap X and, and just said, well, let's pluck, you know, pick a number here. What's the probability that cap X is 50? Uh, once again, I'm just using the law of total probability. With a cap X being 50, if someone had a loss amount of a 50, well, they could have been a low risk or a medium risk or a high risk individual. And so I need to calculate these three probabilities there that cap X is 50 along with cap R being equal to zero or cap R being equal to a one or cap R being equal to two. And when I add up those three values uh, in the table, I get a 0.42. And likewise, uh, the notation I'm gonna use for this probability is an F with a subscript of cap X evaluated at 50. Again, I'll come back to that in just a second. These things, these probabilities are actually called marginal probabilities because uh, the way you can think about these is just adding the adding across the rows or columns and putting the value in the margin, and that gives you what the mar what these probabilities are, what these total probabilities are. Um, and so these are uh, again referred to as marginal probabilities, and uh, I could fill in the rest of the marginal probabilities uh, pretty easily just by adding up the rows and the columns in the table. Notice that, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, that if, if we, starting with the table itself, all of the values in the table um, had better add up to be one or you don't have a distribution. Uh, just like in the single variable case, if you have a, a discrete distribution, all the value, all the probabilities that are defining that distribution better add up to be one. And that's the case here for a joint distribution. All of the values in the table need to add up to one. So when you add up the rows or the, uh, add up the rows and the columns and get the marginal uh, uh, probabilities, and then you add up the marginal probabilities, you will get one there. And so these probabilities are defining what's called the marginal distribution. So the marginal distribution for cap R, well, cap R could be a zero or a one or a two, and then the probabilities that cap R is zero, one, or two is 0 0.3, 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and 0.1. 
uh, respectively. Again, notice that they all those all those add up to one. I could also uh, the joint distribution was a was a dis joint distribution for random variables cap R and cap X. What I have shown in the bottom left is the marginal distribution for cap R. I could also look at the marginal distribution for cap X. Uh, cap X values would be either zero or a 50 or 100 with the marginal probabilities that define the distribution being a 0 0.32, 0 0.42, and 0.26. And of course, those add up to one also. Okay, uh, now back in uh, module one, when we talked about probabilities, there was something that we, we, we talked about conditional probabilities. And the, the way we, we calculated a conditional probability of an event B given event A is we took a ratio in the numerator, we took the probability of uh, A and B, and then the denominator, we took the probability of, of A. So now we can apply this, this, uh, this, this fact to joint distributions where the events then are events involving the random variables cap R and cap X. So for instance, I might look at the probability that cap X equals zero given that cap R equals two. So my B event is that cap X equals zero. My A event is that cap R equals two. Uh, I'll let you uh, slow the video down if you need to, to, to verify all of these, uh, uh, you know, that the color coding is, is, is is, is correct. And then if you look at how we calculate this conditional probability then, well in the numerator that's just the uh, that's just the, the, the joint, the value in the joint distribution table where cap R equals two and cap X equals zero, that's the 0 0.02 value. So in the numerator, I just get the 0 0.02 value and in the denominator, the probability that cap R equals two, that's the marginal probability that cap R equals two and uh, that value I just put in the, in the margin there is 0 0.1 and so that ratio ends up to be just a 0 0.2. The notation I'm going to use for this is, uh, again, density function notation. Uh, so I'm going to use a, an F with a subscript of cap X, given that cap R equal 2. And then I'm, I'm evaluating this density function at X equals 0. So that's the parentheses 0. So I would read that left-hand side on the bottom equation as, uh, cap, uh, as, as F, the density function F, uh, for the conditional random variable cap X given that cap R equals two and then evaluated at zero. So cap X equals zero. And then um, in the numerator, we've already talked about that notation. That's the, the joint density notation. And in the denominator, that's the marginal density notation. And so the, the, what you should remember here, uh, you, you know, what, how I remember this is that conditional, uh, the conditional density will be equal to the joint density divided by the marginal density. Okay, so now these probabilities, uh, these probabilities are going to give me the distribution. And so I look at a, I can look at a conditional distribution. So I'm going to make one up here. Let's look at the conditional distribution for cap X given that cap R is equal to a 1. Uh, well, if cap R is equal to 1, I know I'm talking about a, a medium risk individual, and the cap X values could be either a 0 or a 50 or a 100. So that's the left, that's the, the first column. And now what are the probabilities? Well, some people might be tempted to just pluck out those probabilities, 0 0.12, 0 0.3, and 0.18, but those don't add up to 1, so I know that something's wrong there. And actually, the probabilities are supposed to be the conditional probabilities that cap X is equal to a 0 or a 50 or a 100, given that cap R is equal to 1. And so instead of the values, uh, that instead of plucking out the values in the table, remember conditional is the joint divided by marginal. I'm going to need the marginal probability that cap R equals 1, so let me put that in the table. And then what I'll do is I'll take the joint values, the 0.12, the 0.3, and the 0.18 that I, that I have in the table, and divide those by the marginal, uh, by the marginal probability that cap R equals 1 and I'll get these values 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and of course those values do add up to one. I wanna make one other observation here, and that is let's look at the, the, uh, the 0 0.3 value in blue in the top table and, and compare that to the 0 0.12 value in red in that top table. Notice that the 0 0.3 value is uh, 2.5 times the 0 0.12 value. 0 0.3 is two and a half times 0 0.12. So when I do these conditional 
probabilities that are defining the, the, the conditional distribution below in the table below. I want the results to preserve the relative magnitudes between the values in the joint distribution table. So for instance, since the 0.3 was two and a half times the 0.12 value, I want the, uh, the probability that cap X equals zero given that cap R equal one in the table below to, to I want that I want that to be, uh, I should have said it the other way, I want 2.5, two and a half times that value to be the, the, the next value in the table. And notice that the, the uh, sorry if that's confusing, but I, again, just trying to show you, I'm preserving the relative magnitudes in the, uh, you know, of, the, of the joint probabilities. 0 0.3 is two and a half times 0 0.12. And if you look in the table below, the 0 0.12 was, was, uh, was given a value, uh, you know, I divide by 0 0.6 and I got a 0 0.2 value. 0 0.3, I divide by 0 0.6 and I get 0 0.5 value. Well, 0 0.5 is two and a half times a 0 0.2. So I have preserved that. So uh, that, it took me a little while to get that out, but uh, uh, the, the relative magnitudes of the probabilities in the joint distribution table have been preserved in the conditional, uh, uh, in the probabilities that are defining the conditional distribution in the conditional distribution table. Okay, so I did a, uh, this is a, uh, a conditional distribution of cap X given that cap R equals one. Let me just change it up. I, I didn't have to use uh, a, a condition on cap R. Let's look at something like, uh, what is what if I had a conditioning on cap X? Maybe what are what is the conditional distribution of cap R given that cap X equals 50? So the probabilities that are defining the conditional distribution here are these are these conditional probabilities that cap R is equal to a 0, 1, or 2 given that cap X equals 50. Again, given cap X equals 50, if cap X is a 50, cap R could be a 0, 1, or 2. And now I'm looking at these conditional probabilities. I need these conditional probabilities, but again, they're gonna de depend on the marginal probability that cap X equals two. So let me throw that in the, in, uh, you know, let me, let me throw that on the, uh, on the slide. So the, uh, the marginal distribution is 0.42. So now I'm gonna take the values, the 0.09, the 0.30, and the point, uh, 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 the 0.09, the 0.30, and the 0 0.03 values, and divide by the uh, divide each of those by the marginal uh, uh, probability, the 0.42, and I'll get I'll get then uh, nine over 42. I just I move the decimal place over two places in both numerator and denominator. Okay, so that's a uh, uh, that's how I would calculate conditional uh, uh, probabilities that are then giving me the conditional distribution. All right, so that's a, a, a pretty long video, but there's a lot of stuff in there. It's good, good introductory material for the uh, multivariate random variable module, and I will see you in the next video.